Welcome to the Older Kids Podcast, where we revisit movies from our childhood and see if they still hold up. I am Elliot GB, and today I am joined by return guest, friend of the pod, very funny comic, very good skateboarder. You know him. You love him. Mr. Taylor Clark. Can I have an Azuga? Azuga, 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 You're back! You're back. That one might. Oh, that was your new. Yeah, one. that one might have not been clear, but you know, the thought was there. You're back. You're That's back. good. Welcome, man. Thanks. Well, thanks welcome, for having me. Welcome, welcome to back. Yourself. First, first video welcome one. Back. So people have heard you before, but they might not have seen you. Right. You probably thought I was um, an Asian lady. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> welcome to my my house. This is my son's room. It's the quietest place okay. in uh, my house. All right. What is that? Good reason. Is that by? Well, we trap them in. I here. was going to say, is that by design or? We don't hear a scream. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Well, we might get into that later. Um, but I definitely do have questions about that because that, I'm not a parent, but that seems a little. <laughs> but you are FBI. I'm yeah. I'm not a parent, <laughs> but I, I got credentials. So we'll we'll see. But uh, we're not here to talk about that right now. Today we are here to talk about the 1980 comic book classic Flash Gordon. What plaything can you offer me today? The planet Earth. What's happening? It's an attack. Pathetic Earthlings. Who can save you now? Flash! They'll kill you! Let's all team up and fight him. Prepare him for torture! I want him. Stop at nothing. Flash, I love you, but we only have 14 hours to save the Earth. Flash Gordon is still alive. Gordon's alive? <laughs> Die! Yes! Must be my lucky day. All right, what a trailer we just watched. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so so what was your connection to this movie? Why did you why did you choose this one? Well, I just watched it with my six year old son and uh we only for like just like the last two years we've been watching like a movie a week. It's like the only screen time we really do. Oh wow. And uh normally we choose the movies very carefully. Sometimes I'm like, I watch this movie a lot. It's PG. I'm sure it's fine. Don't need to watch it. It makes sure it's uh, appropriate, yeah. which is what I did with this film. Um, and I, I should have re I should have watched it first. <laughs> it's uh, it is very. I mean, it's not the most like '80s PG, but it's definitely it's it's in the running of the most 80s pg of, of like that 80s pg where you're like it's a kids movie and yet you you know you still have someone just like lying bitch you know and you're like right right okay why was that yes there's a the lying bitch um but the but it was like way more sexual than i yeah. remember like the whole movie is sexy like <laughs> it's it's oozing with sexiness yeah every frame mm -hmm. of every shot and there's even a part where that girl tries to molest old old flashy gourds oh yeah and he's like i'm so turned on right now and that was the moment where my son just made this confused face like <laughs> is he a robot like i turned on i mean is it is flash gordon a vacuum cleaner what does that what does that mean and then that's and it just like Breathe, we just breezed right by. He didn't like look at me and ask me, Daddy, do you get turned on? No, oh, man. <laughs> or anything like that. You should, you know what? Um, you should have, that's, yeah, that's the difference because I would have taken this, paused the movie as a time to been like, okay, here's how it is. Teaching moment. Teaching moment. And then as soon as we're done, movie back on, we go right back into cinema mode, you know? No question. Speaking of boners, check out all these short shorted eagle men. Hey, <laughs> did you okay? Did you notice? Um, there's a when he's like with the tree people and the dude's playing the flute. There's a, when he stands up, you can just see his wang right through the pants. Yeah, okay, so that was the, the moment you noticed you could see his wang. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's like he's he's sitting there and he's playing the flute and then they're talking and then he's like, all right, I'm going to get up. And he gets up, but the camera doesn't get up with him. Right. It stays right. So uh, there's like a good second where he's just, his crotch is just going through <laughs> and it's just like, I think they put something over his dick, but it wasn't like a cod piece. It was just like the length of his dick. So it just <laughs> like it just made it bigger. We wrapped a we wrapped a short magazine around <laughs> a little TV guide. Yeah, yeah, a little TV guide. Yeah, a quarterly. You know, yeah. nothing too thick. Yeah. Um, it's so funny. Yeah, there was a couple of shots where I, I thought for sure the only point of the shot was to showcase male genitalia. <laughs> well, you know, it was a different time. It was, uh, you know, the short shorts. It was were, a different time. That's what uh, you know people played sports in. That's what people just uh, wore. Um, and then I think, you know, a couple of, enough testicles pop out. They're like, maybe we should make these a little longer. Mm, but not before we make the Flash Gordon. Hey, no, well, that, well, they had them. That's the thing. They had them all made and they were just warehoused. And they were like, we can't drop these just yet. Mm -hmm. and, then it, and then it came out and the movie did so bad. They're like, fucking get them out now. Get them out. Push them, push them, pump them, pump them, baby. Pump those short shorts. Pump, <laughs> pump those shorts. <laughs> that was the president of the United States being pumped those the shorts. The president of the United States, who also owns all the short, short manufacturers exactly. around that's, the country. Look, deep state. That's when people talk about deep state, that's what they're talking about. What was this, 1980? Yeah. So, like, a lot of people don't know Reagan was very heavily invested in short shorts. <laughs> He was really behind Flash Gordon, more because it was uh, homoerotic, yeah. less because of the short shorts. It's, what but... people don't know is every picture you see of him behind the, a desk, short shorts. Like he's got a suit. He's got top top his suit, Something. top his business, bottom is short. Well, uh, and then that'll be just about the end about that. Okay, now uh, my balls are hanging out. <laughs> now I can't get up until everyone <laughs> turns around. All right, and then my balls are... <laughs> yeah. He makes everyone turn around. Everyone look away. It's like the Secret yeah. Service knows. Whenever he gets up, you got to look. You look down, but not at. The Secret Service comes over. So, little girls, uh, that you just sold the most Girl Scout cookies this quarter. Congratulations. You're about to meet the president. Now, just a heads up. <laughs> And actually, it's not really a heads up, it's a balls up. The head is hidden all yeah. the time, but the balls are going to be dropping low, and uh, you're going to want to just keep your eyes on the prize. And by the prize, I mean the exit. Get out of there. <laughs> Get out. Actually, you know, we're just going to cancel this whole thing. <laughs> This is, this is a second thought. This is as inappropriate as watching Flash Gordon with a six year old. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I never saw this as a kid. I saw it for the first time last night as a 28-year-old man, and uh, still, I still had a lot of questions. So I feel like if you were there, I would, you would have been the father figure, so I would have turned to you and been like, what is going on? What is this? What is this movie? <laughs> I'd have been like, you mean the highlight of your life that's <laughs> unfolding before your eyes? You mean the epitome of art that's uh, occurring in real time in front of yeah, you? Yeah, I'm like, what is it's, what is uh, what is going on? And you're like, oh, you're peaking right now. That's what that's what. <laughs> this is a high point of your life. So you're gonna want to remember this. Some people have to take acid to get this close to God. <laughs> you, you're right there. Um, did you? So did you actually? I mean, now it's known as like a cult classic, and that it's like so bad it's good, and it almost like defines the genre of. Yeah. Of cult classic I, in that way. I had never heard of it. Like I had, I'm sure I've heard it, but I like knew nothing about when I went, I thought this was a movie about the flash. <laughs> well, then we know his name is flash Gordon and he used to be a football player. See that, so that's my thing. I'm like, Oh, he's a football player. Uh, and then I was like, so that makes sense. He's fast. You know, it's probably just what he's doing. And uh, then they said he was a quarterback, and I was like, mm, okay, well, I guess, you know, there's some fast quarterbacks Good cover, out I there. Guess. Yeah, you know, we got Lamar Jackson right now, so, like, like yeah, there's this guy. Um, and, then <laughs> and then when they said uh, the Dr. Uh, Zarkov, when he, when his, like, all his shit's falling apart or whatever, and that dude's dipping out, and he's like, Why are you running away? I was like, oh, okay, that's going to be coming up a lot in the movie because he runs around. Um why are you running away you'll see yeah that's what I'm like i saw it was like <laughs> foreshadowing that's some 1980s foreshadowing right there is he's gonna be saying that a whole lot and then of course awesome. you know the movie went on and i was like so he has no powers he's <laughs> uh he's just a guy who 
was it the wrong place at the wrong time? That's yeah. it. No, you're right. Um, he's not fast. He's just good looking, and it never it get, always gets out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Every single bind he's in, Somehow. he gets out of. Which I mean, in the movie, he doesn't seem that smart. So it's like, I think his gift is he's just very lucky because it's like he he can't really fight. Uh, Sam, I had one of my highs was uh, just Sam J. Jones, just him in the movie, the just the <laughs> actor. It's he, he uh, was not very good. He, uh, I read something online that he was so big that he had to do his own stunts and uh, choreograph a lot of them, which makes complete sense when you see that like football fight scene where his strategy is just to hold something that's <laughs> the shape of a football and yeah. and run into people. Yeah. That seems so unimportant. Yeah. That he'd be like, well, this makes me, it's more like a security blanket. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when he doesn't have it in his hands, he's like, I don't know what to do. And then as soon as he has it, he's like, oh. Oh, that's right. Okay. Violent. Yes. I, I, I understand now. And so he's doing that. And it's. Flash will crash. It's, yeah. Crashing will. <laughs> So I'm just like, what, what, what is this guy? Like, why? And then he does, uh, my favorite part of that whole fight scene is when he does the roll. When he, like, throws it at the guys, or they're running at him, and then he just log rolls on the ground, trips all of them. And that works. 41! 42! 43! They've never seen a fighting technique so complicated <laughs> and nuanced. Exactly. So just him him in general, I was just like, this this is great because he's not a good actor. It is. He's not a good actor. And he, it's just like as classic. It's like if a five-year-old, you're like, write a, write a movie about a classic American hero. This is what they would write. Yeah. Be like, all right, football, blonde hair, big muscles, girls want to fuck him immediately. Yeah. Um, I don't know, eagle people with their dicks hanging out the end. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, just spitballing here, eagle people with their dicks hanging out. Let me, let me think. Uh, maybe there's a pillow fight with a bunch of aliens who are cucks. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and then also, you know, this is this is the 70s, this is the 80s, okay? So racially, we're not there yet. The black people, they're going to be the poorest ones in the galaxy. And also, it's a movie, so the black guy's going to be the first one to die. And yeah, yeah, you know, hey, we're not trying to move mountains. Here. And I'm five, and I know this, so we're trying to. We're already very progressive. We're pretending that a football player can fly an airplane, okay? <laughs> but he never learned how to land. Switches over there, and start hitting them. Listen, did you fly? Let him get as far as landing. I was afraid you'd ask that. No, hang on. Here we go. Well, you, you know, you can only do. <laughs> so much we'll take out the part where the airplane runs over a bunch of black people okay <laughs> and then are we greenlit or what <laughs> then are we gre <laughs> look i'm trying to fucking compromise with you here okay i, I just i don't so know what more i can get i got recess in 20 minutes <laughs> i gotta get out of here did you ever like look at the comic because this was a comic back in like the yeah a little bit i was scanning through it uh after i watched the movie like where did this fucking come from yeah. then the comic's even older it's like from this early 60s or something right i feel like well no they made a movie um well actually i don't know if they made the movie first and the comic later but they made a movie in like 36 so this is technically made... a remake they made a flash gordon movie in 1936 oh that's news to me. Yeah, and actually, you know, the craziest thing about this movie is when I was watching it, I was like, this reminds me of Star Wars. But yeah. obviously, I mean, Star obviously, Star Wars came out in 1977, and this came out in 1980. No, but uh, so I was like, okay, so this is after Star Wars. Obviously, they're chasing that dragon, trying to be like, you know, let's, let's make another hit like that. Uh -huh. But the crazy thing is, George Lucas wanted to make a remake of the 1936 movie, couldn't get the rights to it, and then made Star Wars instead. So they... Instead of Flash instead Gordon. Instead of Flash Gordon. And so that was his kind of, like... 
thing because he i think he liked the comics or he liked the original movie so much and was like there's so much you can do with this world which obviously they tried to do in this movie but he couldn't get the rights because the whoever wrote the script or whatever wasn't giving him up for his price so he's like fuck it i'll just go off and make star wars made star wars and then they were like oh fuck we gotta we gotta catch up maybe we should make flat yeah, yeah. and then so they so then they made this but the cinematographer on this movie um was the cinematographer from the first star wars movie so that's why so that's why looking at it it, you can kind of see it you know in a lot of the shots and uh he had kind of like this signature style that was like um like kind of like fuzzy and bright you know like just soft and bright which Mm -hmm. pulled through a lot but um costumes man yeah well that's costumes in this world bonkers like we were talking before there's a lot of well, it's had a lot of moving parts, and you're like, not that many moving parts, and I feel like it's all moving parts. Yeah, but yeah, there's right, there's right, no right. there's no uh, like choreography. Like if it was a dance, it's just everyone doing freestyle at once, and they're just like, yeah. I read somewhere there's a ton of improv actually in this movie. Yeah, yeah. The um at the very end when he jumps at the camera and is like, yeah. Long live Flash! You've saved your ass. Have a nice day. Yeah! That was literally because they could not figure out how to end the movie. And he was just like, I'll just do this. <laughs> and then a bunch of Toyota executives were like, hmm, how do we capitalize on this? Yes, exactly. But he... Are you older? Wait, how much older? Do you remember the Toyota ads? Which ones? Did you just laugh at that joke because you wanted it to be funny? Look, dude, I've been, I've been, Toyota... I've been pretty lonely. <laughs> I'm pretty lonely these last Every few months. Every Toyota ad... Okay, shut up for a second. Every Toyota ad <laughs> used to end with them buying a Toyota and jumping into the air with their fingers in the air, and it would go, Toyota! And then it would freeze frame. And that was exactly how Flash Gordon ended. Yeah, dude, I totally remember that. I was no, in, like, high school, I bro. I, I was on my third marriage when those commercials first came out, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? How old am I, dude? I was fucking... <laughs> I was filling out paperwork at that point in my life. <laughs> you mean homework? Look, <laughs> paper's paper, dude. Call your homework paperwork. Paper's I got paper. a lot of paperwork to do, mom. Don't go ride my ass. It's like, that same kid. Puzzle, it's, that, yeah. it's that same kid that was pitching the movie. <laughs> just comes up with a cigarette, just like, oh, George long day. He's trying to steal my ideas. <laughs> I got George Lucas just looking over my shoulder at all fucking times. <laughs> Turns out we're both just trying to make Dune. Anyways, <laughs> I've got to get out of here. Anyways, what's for dinner? I don't have time for dinner. Why am I even asking? Why are you even asking? I'm intermittent fasting. <laughs> God damn, that's so good. Well, also, uh, Sam J. Jones, speaking of just him and how crazy he was, he stopped showing up to the movie at a certain point the flash gordon the actor flash right? gordon was upset about pay something about pay so either he wasn't getting enough or it was taking too long for him to get they paid just. and then uh and then they went for like i think it was like christmas break or something around around the holidays and he just flew back to la and then didn't come back and so there were some some parts they had to, but it was like towards the end. But so they had to do, uh, they had to get like a double, just like a stand in or whatever. Um, but then also they had to redub his lines, but he wouldn't come back for it. So there's just someone else has literally redubbed all of his lines in the whole movie. It's a redub. So none of that is the actor's voice. None of that is actually him. God, that makes me so happy. <laughs> I, that is the fucking coolest. They took out. <laughs> so that, but that's the thing is they they did a good job. You can tell, yeah. But now, but when now you when you it, watch it, it all looks a little off, and they probably did that with a bunch of the actors to make it match. <laughs> <laughs> that same voice actor actually did all the voices. Yeah, he forced their hand. The he forced their hand, so they had to just bring the quality level. This was actually going to be an incredible movie, and then he pulled that, and they're like, well, now we have to make it terrible. Yeah, but you know what? It's a great showcase of voiceover Greg's talents, because, <laughs> man, the they're range. Like, Greg got a fucking great reel out of this. It's just the whole movie. <laughs> the That's whole his movie. reel. God. Yeah, so Sam, Sam Jones, that was... Uh, 
Wow. Was he a star I, back then? I don't think so. I think this is really all that he's done. But at the time when they uh when they first, you know, were like we're doing this, they had they booked all the like main people for sequels after this cuz they were like this is going to do great. This is going to be incredible. And uh it didn't. So then they're like never mind. <laughs> now, your schedules are Ooh, now We open. shouldn't have signed those 20-year contracts with all those yeah, hot people. Yeah. So I think <laughs> this was like his, you know, supposed to be his kind of his setup. Yeah, this was his like his uh his vehicle yeah, to fame. Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly, but it uh <laughs> It didn't work. Also, Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to uh, be the main, but he dropped out I did hear because that. of his yeah. accent. Uh, and then Kurt Russell. Turns out they didn't need his voice anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered. It would not have mattered at all. Greg could have done it. They didn't even know about <laughs> Greg when they were fucking interviewing Arnold. <laughs> they're like, well, we would have, could- Arnold, if we knew Greg was here. Yeah, they go into casting and they're like, all right, we got to find the right person. And they're like, look, it actually doesn't fucking matter because we got Greg. <laughs> So we can we learned a valuable lesson in Flash Gordon. It can be anybody. So after that, every movie they're like, we just gotta find a Greg. And it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, Greg's like, I could do it again. They're like, get out of here, Greg. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday's news. One and done. One and done, <laughs> Greg. But yeah, and then Kurt Russell also uh also oh, dropped wow. he dropped out because the character was too flat, which it was. You knew nothing. That's what I wrote down. My main thing about this is just like it's a yeah. it's a bad movie because you learn nothing about anyone. Nothing. It's just not a damn thing. Um, other than he plays football, he he wants to be a pilot. Yep. And um, very falls in love super easy. I, I kept thinking that the whole time. Yep. I was like, these guys just met. Yeah, within forty eight hours, they go from complete strangers too engaged but as soon as they go up in the sky and that as soon as they get kidnapped yeah they're like married yeah like you'd swear, you'd swear to god they've been together since high school all, the way they look at each other oh flash and yeah. like all that shit you're like what well, that's what i saw no, i was like just that. all right she's i guess just uh very outgoing and comfortable because she's like i'm nervous you know what so i'm like okay she's talking a lot because she's nervous but then as soon as they, well, when they, uh, when they crash land, did you notice when they crash land, this is going into like the sexual thing, when they crash land, laying there, his hand right above the boob. Of course I noticed right. that it, it, immediately. <laughs> I was like, you can't like, can do that. No. Couldn't do that anymore. No, you can't fucking pretend seatbelt yep. anybody anymore. Yep. And it's like, <laughs> oh no, we're just. It's not like the good old days where you could get a. Good cop a feel of the upper boob when you tried to protect someone. You know what I'm talking about, right? 1980, huh? The good old days. Right. The good old days. Back when Flash Gordon was had his real voice and uh, you could feel upper boob without getting ridiculed. What if someone has like the the like director's cut, but they're like, I got the cut where it's his voice. He sounds like this. All right, I'm Flash Gordon. What are we doing here, huh? Whoa, aliens. Okay. All right. Flash. He just says that all the time. Flash. Flash. The song's different, too. <laughs> Flash, Gordon. It's Save me. You up the Univoice. <laughs> That's what, yeah. He did the songs, too. And then they were like, all right, so we got to get Greg in here to do all the voices. And then we got to bring in Queen to do the soundtrack because he's playing the instruments, too. Dan, 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 dan. But it's him doing that. Every part of this movie was supposed to be better. It was originally the Beatles. But <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> well, fucking, fucking Sam J. Jones, man, just brought it all down. <laughs> but I mean, it is crazy that Queen, I mean, hi, I didn't know Queen did the soundtrack. So that is the reason I thought I wanted to watch it with my son, because we were like, he, he's been listening to Queen. He loves, he's learning to play piano, all these Queen songs. So I was like, yeah, they did the whole soundtrack to this one movie. Yeah. And then we listened to the Flash Gordon song, and it's such a badass song yeah. that we were both like, yeah, let's watch this movie tonight. And I just like blindly put it on and then okay. immediately was like, oh, my God, I've seen this four billion times. Yeah, I must have had this on VHS. I don't think I watched it after I was like seven or eight years old, but like 
as I was watching it, I was like, I know every single thing that happened in this yeah. movie. Like, I could recite the dialogue as it was happening. Well, it was so surreal. I mean, you didn't have to, though, because Greg already did it. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> you try to take Greg's job, dude? What? The, that's not fucking cool. <laughs> I did. I'm remaking Flash Gordon, but I'm doing all the voices. <laughs> I'm the and Greg. I'm the... Just make a shirt that says, I'm the Greg. Greg Gordon. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that is another thing that I noticed. I'd say uh, my low was just really it was at first I thought it was just Ming and his whole family and regime. I was like, these are all predators. They're just like Epps like and it, it's probably because it's it's this year. But I'm like, this is some real Epstein shit that they got going on. Where, yeah, especially yeah. seeing, uh, like you were talking about when uh, Flash <laughs> is getting molested in the spaceship, um, and he's you know on the on the phone on the on the telepathy phone with his girl and slips up. So that's where I was like, Flash is a bit of a dog. I saw you executed. I was saved. I'm still alive. Oh thank God! Where are you? In a rocket, in a rocket. racing to racing Arborea, Arborea to get help. get help. Are you okay? You Over. Okay? Over. Over. I'm locked in Ming's bedroom. Fake him out. How? Girls know how, Dale. It's been done to me. Fake him out till I get back. Over. Yeah, it's too dangerous for you here. You can't come back. Stay where you're safe. Oh, my God. This girl's really turning me on. I, I didn't quite get that. Think it again. Forget I thought it. It wasn't about you. Over. What? Hang up. I've got to go. Where? Someone's coming. He's basically getting an over the pants HJ and he's like, I'm uh I'm getting help. I'm going to get help. And she's like, Okay. And he's like, fucking ace that one. And then what is it? Like, do you say I'm turned on? Yeah. Oh, he's turning me on. Yeah. I'm getting turned on. Yeah. And it's like, what? And he's like, uh, I mean, uh, uh, uh and I was like, Flash, bro, you're you're whatever. But she says right before then, she's like, I'm taking you to my pleasure moon. Why don't they team up and overthrow him? Team up? What does that mean? Maybe I'll show you sometime. Wonderful. You can do that when I take you to Cythera. Where? It's my secret pleasure moon. I have a little palace there built just for two. Wait a minute, Aura. Oh, Flash, I saved your life. That's what I was too. I was like, hey, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but where is it? Um That's your moon. And then, <laughs> and then and then he's like, uh, I don't know. And then she literally goes, I saved your life. Now fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's some real fuck. Because I did watch that Epstein documentary, and that was the thing where they would, you know, prey on underprivileged people and be like, I'm helping you. So now you got to do this for old for me for for Aura, I call her Predatora because because you're a smart comedian. You know, I'm probably one of the smartest people around. Because my brilliance just kicks in like that sometimes. There's no channeling it; it just comes. And it's, it scares me. And I can't. I don't even know where. <laughs> I did. You are, it scares me. I didn't. Even, I'm frightened of my own genius. I didn't even want to write that down. I was like, I don't think <laughs> Predatora. I don't think they're ready for that. But and then fucking her dad with Ming, where he, you know, obviously the king is fucking the slaves. But then the slaves are like, you just got to get lit before you do it. And <laughs> you'll remember, but it'll make it easier to remember. Drink this. What is it? It has no name. Many brave men died to bring it here from the galaxy of pleasure. It'll make your nights with Ming more agreeable. Will it make me forget? No, but it will make you not mind remembering. Wow. This isn't bad at all. Yeah, what was that part all about? Was that, are you saying this is your low? This, yeah, this, this was this was a low. Was. It was a low. That she has her pleasure moon. You got to get dry. And it just all around, it was just very... 
Ugh, very rapey. Yeah, and then she gives it to one of the slaves. Like, come on, have yeah. some rape potion with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She fucking yeah. She tricks the the other slave into doing it. Wouldn't you like a sip? Oh no, it's forbidden for our slaves. Oh, believe me, honey, that's quality stuff. Have some. Listen, we're all girls here. I won't tell. Just one sip. Live a little, huh? <laughs> Bottoms up. all know it's the shit right because yeah. that slave was like i'm pretty game i've been kind of waiting for someone to invite me to do this for <laughs> yeah. quite a while i've been pretty bored over here so i've been studying english for half my <laughs> life so i could understand yeah uh, yeah so that was that was a whoa is i was like i don't i don't get this i don't know why this is all like i get that it's the adventure you know and He's got to get free, but I'm like, this this rapiness is a big part of the movie. Because she was supposed to marry Ming, but she was going to get, they were going to consummate before? Yeah, you know, that's how they do it in outer space. And he was ruler of the entire universe, Ming. Yes. Right? He didn't He didn't have a, sec a section. He was the king of the whole goddamn place. Yeah. And the only reason he came to Earth was to poke with it like a kid would you know pull the wings off a mosquito or something yeah yeah he uh well i also so i guess a high as i was like this is the movie for 2020 because uh he he says i only every thousand years are you, what are you at 420 <laughs> thank you yeah that's what <sighs> cut it joey cut the feed cut the feed we're done um, Hold on, I have I have six. That's what she said. Jokes I've been saving up. <laughs> All right, cool. Just at the, at the end, we'll get a rundown of them, and I'll just splice them in throughout the episode. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, I, I submit them. I, it's my prerequisite for every podcast I do. I got to slip in four. That's what she said. Jokes, <laughs> and I'm gonna fart six times. <laughs> All right. Um, and it is in your yeah, rider. I was actually so proud of myself for not interrupting you when you said four twenty two. As soon as I said it, I was like, fuck. And then I was like, just, I like, keep, just keep going. I bit my tongue. Keep going. Like, and then you laughed. And I was like, yep, he noticed. He noticed. They all noticed. You look like a damn fool right now, Elliot. Um, this is the movie for 2020. Blaze and, it. Uh, it just Snoop Dogg. Blaze it up. Blaze it up. Um, yeah, it's a good Snoop. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Um, anyways, this is a perfect movie for the year. 2020 because he talks about well one they have the handshake gun did you notice that in the beginning when he yeah, after he wait. after he cops the feel after he cops the feel when they crash he comes out meets the aliens and he's like howdy neighbors and then they just shoot him with the hand the handgun we're from earth friends <laughs> I saw that and I was like, this is perfect for uh, one. If I had that, I would just steal handshakes all the time. You know, you see someone going out for one with someone else and you just fucking snipe it and just get that in there. I think that would be hilarious. That's just fun for everyone. Uh, that's mainly you, but I guess. Dude, I love. Well, I already like uh, stealing. Comp Can you imagine you're going to shake someone's hand? And a rocket hand <laughs> takes the handshake away from you. And you're like, what fun this is. Yeah. No, and then you look <laughs> up and I'm just standing there like. <laughs> and then I guess you'd have to introduce yourself. You have to be like, I am Elliot. I'm a bit of a uh, rap scallion. Alien technology that I use for <laughs> pranks. <laughs> I use just for good, good, clean fun. You know, for goops. Just good, clean you know? fun. Well, I mean, I already do uh, steal compliments whenever someone is like, oh, those are nice shoes to someone else. You just go, oh, thanks. I love and that. 
they lose it. So it's, you know, it's the same thing, but it's just a, a robot hand getting shot into yours. But for 2020, that's how we handshake now. Because we can't do it, but if you got... Oh, that's what you meant by... Yeah. for I, I totally, yes. That also. I thought you meant because it was such a, like, um, anti-fascist, pro-revolution <laughs> type of fucking movie. But you're like, no, I mean more because of the rocket handshake. Oh, no. Because, well, because of the hands, but then also, uh, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> so that I was like, that'd be perfect for 2020. But then later when he says he's like every thousand years, I, you know, I test the galaxy. Every thousand years, I test each life system in the universe. I visit it with mysteries, earthquakes, unpredicted eclipses, strange craters in the wilderness. If these are taken as natural, I judge that system. But if the hand of Ming is recognized in these events, I judge that system dangerous to us. I call upon the great god, Dizan, and for his greater glory and our mutual pleasure, I destroy it utterly. I heard that and I was like, yo, what if? Fucking Ming is out there right now. What? Making I'm getting his fingers done? Just, getting his nails yeah, manicured? If Ming is out there right now. You know, playing the piano. <laughs> just breaking all social distancing rules. Playing <laughs> piano at the nail Going salon. To salon. Having concerts. What if but like what if that's going on? And that's what all this shit is. Because now we got, like, land. I was talking to my mom last night. We got land hurricanes. There's, like, re this weekend is about to be, like, the hottest L.A. has ever been, I think. There's, it's, like, it's about to be ridiculously hot. And, like, all that's getting normal. So what if old Ming is up there? Just. And that's what we're. So I'm honestly, I, I wrote it down. But I was scared to talk about it. Because he said if they start to get wise. They're out. So basically what I'm asking is this was a documentary, right? <laughs> yep. And you fell for my trap. Now Ming is going to get us all. Oh, Hail I... Ming! <laughs> God damn it. I knew I could get him to seek you out and seek the truth about you. This Ming's a psycho. This Ming is a psycho. Who said that? I'm just realizing all of the Jeff Bezos metaphors <laughs> that are available because he's like this bald control freak, right? Ooh. And he has like little Alexas floating around. And he started like, he started out data. he started out selling space books. He did start out selling space books. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point though. I didn't even think about that. He called it um Amarzon. <laughs> Cut it. Cut the feed, please. <laughs> Give me nothing. Nothing for a Mars. All right. But uh, that is pretty good. Um, yeah, he caught he was spying. He spies on everyone. He catches all the little secret whispers and everything. Yeah. I don't know, man. I guess Ming was Ming was pretty scary. Plus, it's like he didn't even give a fuck about his daughter's life. He was like, she's out there. She's the traitor. No, like he didn't even think about it. Father. The traitor is close to confession, your majesty. Should we stop the torture? No. Father! Damn you, father! He's cold, heartless <laughs> bastard. But, what, but he's probably got a soft side. He's probably got... Right. He's like, uh... Um, he's just really into, uh, like, miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> he has little, he has little figurines of like uh, stuff from every planet that he's destroyed. You know, he's like, because I'm also <laughs> sentimental. You know, I understand I'm killing a lot of things, but now after you destroy the hawk people, I'll be with my train. Yeah. <laughs> he has, he has like the little hat and everything too, the overalls. <laughs> choo choo. They like come in, they like knock, and he's like, What is it? And they're like, Oh, you know, 
your daughter's she's he's like, can it wait until <laughs> until the four o'clock comes into the station? God damn it! <laughs> if I have to push that back, everything will be backed up for the rest of the week. If I have to load the coal into the caboose car one more fucking time, all right, that's it. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm blowing up Earth. He takes the hat off. They're like, I'm sorry. He's like, No, the hat's already off. What? What? I can't put it back on. Now all my train people know I'm bald. Is that what you wanted, Greg? <laughs> Yeah. Everybody's a drag. He's like, not only did he do all the voices, we named all the B characters after him. <laughs> That'd be pretty. It's so, for this was a terrible movie, except it was incredible for one guy, because Greg is yeah. like, this movie's all about me. I made this what? movie. My high was probably the fight, the like on the spikes. <laughs> A lot of whips in yeah. this movie. <laughs> what does I mean? Like, it is just a sexy movie, top to bottom. And uh, and honestly, like, I want to say that it whatever homosexual awakening I ever had happened during this movie, the first time I watched it, and it was, like, re-happening while I was watching it this time. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like got, a this was a big I night for you. That. Yeah, like I was like coming out as I watched it a little bit as like bisexual, where I'm like, man, I thought I was maybe 90 10, but now I'm thinking what's more like 25 75. <laughs> you keep pausing it, like turning to your son, like, look, I got it. I'll tell you later. I went up five percent when I saw so when uh that when that hawk man said dive that was a five percent jump i don't know why it turned me on so much <laughs> and the the fight scene was my my epic high because uh because I, that's the thing i remember the most about the movie from when i was a kid like yeah. i always like i remember thinking like mortal Kombat is ripping off flash gordon yeah. you know like every all that was it was just like the heart it was the coolest <laughs> yeah like image of a place to hold a fight like it was so comic booky. Yeah, it, and I thought it was like pretty. And it, I remember being legitimately like really scared when his like eye was on the spike. Promise me if you kill me, you'll team up with Fulton and fight me. And I, I could see my son like squirming because it's like there's no way they're surviving this. Like yeah. those spikes are sharp. Yeah, and you're like actually. You know, compared to the uh, the technology we have today, you can clearly tell those are foam spikes. So they're <laughs> surviving everything. If we know anything about this movie based on this conversation, those were definitely real spikes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They're like, look, we can't afford the foam ones. We can't do it. What's the actor's name who played Flash Gordon? Sam J. Jones. Sam J. J. Jones says real spikes or he's going back to Cali again. <laughs> Look, he says he's not coming out of our out of his trailer until he sees blood. So someone's got to die. <laughs> he's turning into a real Ming. And they're like, I mean, who comes through with us on all the other great ideas? Yeah, I know. That's right. Okay, let's see if he can do it. Greg, <laughs> can you die? Greg's like, yeah, I can fuck it. I can die twice. Post, post all the voices. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Greg, look, it's a big day for you. You're going to have to do all of this dialogue, and then you're going to have to die. <laughs> He's like, anything for the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can make that work. That he just yeah, yeah. <laughs> Old Greg can do it. Lights yeah. one of the treat guys on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that... Well, there was... um. Shit, who else was in this? Oh, fuck. I wrote his name down. Deep Roy. Oh, you got to go? Sorry. I think my brother's just got your <laughs> Come back to the screen. And you're looking at me with so much anger. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was uh, this dude, Deep Roy, in the movie who was... Uh, Do you ever watch Eastbound and Down? Yeah. Do you, the second season when he goes to Mexico, uh, his like sidekick Aaron. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 the, yeah. the smaller dude. He was in the uh -huh. movie. 
He was uh he was or he was Predatora's uh like pet. It's pretty fucked up. That was him. That was him, and he looks wow. exactly the same. I gotta go back and look at it. Yeah, and he was also uh, he was like the Oompa Loompa and the uh, Johnny Depp Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Right, remake. right, yeah. right, 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 right. So yeah, I saw him and I was like, fuck yeah. And then I also looked up. I was like, how old is this dude? That is Greg, actually. <laughs> that was Greg. <laughs> He's the most talented dude in show business. So they look. They're like, God damn it! We also forgot to cast one part. What the <laughs> fuck? And then Greg's just in the shadows, like, I got it. I can do it. No big deal. What do I got to do? Be a pet? <laughs> Easy. Know that I got to die after that, right? Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> God damn, good old Greg. Um, also, real quick, I did have as a low, and they really snuck this one in there, that uh, Zarkov, the crazy doctor, was a Nazi who, yeah. uh, who killed his wife by throwing her into the pool at, I'm assuming, was a party, or just people were chasing her. Going through yeah, his and memories. Then he was like, he showed promise. Oh, he yeah. Says, see, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they he see Hitler. Hitler. And he's like, that's my kind of guy. <laughs> hmm. Now he showed promise. <laughs> So not only was Ming just, you know, a bunch of predators, but they were also some space Nazis. Well, I think that that's what kind of what made it like super obvious to me was like, oh, this is almost like an animal farm simplicity of like of, of a revolution. Right. Of yeah. like uh, this is what happens as a, fa a fascist rules the universe. And if these two people could stop groups could stop fighting and come together they could overthrow the cruel dictator right yeah. and so it's really simple and even flash realizes it immediately right it's like the first line as soon as he gets to space he's like why don't these tree freaks and these hawk fucks like <laughs> join up and overthrow this dickhead um i think those that was a direct quote or should i <laughs> i was supposed to do this every moon of mongo is a kingdom my father keeps them fighting each other constantly it's a really brilliant strategy. Why don't they team up and overthrow him? Team up? What does that mean? But he, he calls it out like as soon as he gets there. Yeah. And the hawk people and they're, they're all like, yeah, right. <laughs> Teamwork. What is that? Yeah. yeah, that that was funny because in that in that same fight scene, that's when it's like they're like, oh, OK. Now I see what you're saying. We'll work together. And that's when I remembered, oh, the through line of this is he's supposed to be bringing teamwork to the rest of the galaxy or like yeah. to the rest of the exactly. universe. Like, yeah. oh, that's I just thought it was he literally is just stumbling through this. He's found himself in some space creeps. And he's just like, I guess I got to get out of here with my new wife that I met yesterday. I don't even think they <laughs> and don't my, even... And my sparkling white T-shirt, which will not which will end this film as sparkling white as when it began. It says Flash. He's wearing his own merch. I had that as a high, too. I was like, that's a good comic right there because he's wearing Thank his own you. merch. All he's throughout. not a superhero, but he is a salesman. But he's a hustler. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be selling them after the movie in the lobby. You can find them. They're all extra, extra smalls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm also out of large, uh, extra large <laughs> and medium. And he digs through. <laughs> ticks through the cardboard box. And I don't have any smalls either, so I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, they're good for babies and pets. <laughs> He's still pitching. <laughs> um, that was uh, yeah, that was awesome. But uh, what I forget what I was trying to say. The the high, the high being the fight on the yeah, the on fight on the spikes, and then the low being the pillow fight. Don't touch me. Oh, you! Don't! Oh, I'm a prisoner, too! You damn Mongo person! Oh, you couldn't tell the truth to save your life! Oh, oh. Dale, stop! I'm going to be exiled in the morning! Liar! Ah. Oh, yeah! You liar! Ah. 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 
this another trick, Aura? Is this a trick? I thought that was like the best choreography in the whole movie because they were like actually flipping each other and like going at it. I will say it was also probably in cinema the most believable pillow fight <laughs> yeah. of all of the, of all, because the movie and the scenario, the setting, the costumes, everything is so unbelievable yeah. that all of a sudden these two girls get into like a lighthearted pillow fight and you're like, I, I buy this immediately. Yeah. Of course they get into a pillow fight. Um, and they... A credit to their acting, play it perfectly. But it, but it, the reason it's a low is because um, the, um, the all of the aliens that were watching giggling. <laughs> <laughs> if they just took that one part out, they did. It was seriously. I was just like, why are they like? Why? Why is this so entertaining to them? <laughs> I think they're giggling because they're like, we're all fucked either way. So really, <laughs> we're this, all going to die. Yeah, exactly. They're like, we are going to be taken advantage of uh, <laughs> by this fucking <laughs> they're all high on rape juice. monster. We're all <laughs> drugged up because we're going to get raped. And, uh, you know, but sure. <laughs> hey, you guys fight. You guys hash it out. We'll see. We'll see. And as soon as they're done, they're like, cool. So look where we are. Oh, wow. The same fucking place. So, <laughs> oh, that was resolved. Now we're still <laughs> what under the power of a crazy bald man. Like, yeah. Nothing has changed. Exactly. It's done. And they're like, cool. Take your fucking rocket hands and go steal some handshakes. You goofy fuck. Get out of here. <laughs> if it is, it's like, cool. So we can all just go now. Right. <laughs> oh, wait, we can't. So now you just have a bruise. And then she actually had a fucking bruise. And that was, she did. I mean, maybe there was some uh, animosity because I think they filmed this in Italy. So I know there, I just saw something that there was a big language barrier on set between the Italian actors and the English actors. So, yeah, some of the actors were like, like actually like very renowned theater actors, right? Wasn't yeah. the guy who played the evil scientist dude who, what, uh, that is actually my high. His entire performance yeah. from beginning to end of the movie is <laughs> so out of control. It made me so, it made me be able to kind of watch the entire thing because he is, so into that character yeah his facial expressions alone on the rocket ship on yeah. the way out of space it was should have won an academy oh Award. when he's like passing out when he has his little monologue the red pedal friendship built this to send in friendship so incredible that, i yeah. was watching that and i was like oh he's he's pretending it's the g-forces and then but then he passes out so i was like wait was he just trying to pass out like was it was this he's like this is how people pass out and then when he gets all his memories stolen too i thought he did like an amazing job of being like you mean it's all my fault <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. But uh but then he got smarter, right? Didn't he outsmart the smarter takeawayer machine? Yeah, because he started thinking about like uh like Shakespeare and art and the Beatles and stuff that you can't take away, I guess. So that's why they let us escape. Clyde decided he'd wiped out your memory. But do you know why it really failed? I can't imagine. As I was going under. I started to recite Shakespeare, the Talmud, the formulas of Einstein, anything I could remember, even a song from the Beatles. It armored me, girl. They couldn't wipe those things away. You can't beat the human spirit. So he was the one with superpowers the whole time. Yeah. And then he learned, like, their math and language and stuff yeah. like that, right? So, I... I... <laughs> So the whole I love time, that character. The whole time we're focusing on Flash Gordon, who has no skills whatsoever. And then there's this doctor. I mean, yeah. he was a Nazi, so like, okay. But he it, wasn't a Nazi. He yes, he was. <laughs> yes, he showed all the Hitler shit. And then he like worked for NASA. NASA hired a lot of Nazis. Oh my god, you're right. He was fucking from Project Paperclip. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> And then he did 9-11. <laughs>
<laughs> but so that's what, the sequel. At the end, we do the sequel, the yeah. Flash Gordon nine eleven edition. Yeah, but it's just it's literally the same thing where he's just going through all of this, but in nine eleven now, and he's just like it's Whoa. literally the same movie. <laughs> He's in the cockpit. One of the terrorists is trying to fuck him. And he's just like, I don't know what to do. I'm getting, I'm really turned on. Bush Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. Well, um, but uh, so some of the actors are like renowned Italian actors or yeah. renowned theater actors. Yeah. Like that guy, the evil scientist dude, I think the leader of the Hawkman, I think all of the heavies yeah, the Hawk guy. Were actually come from like the theater world, right? I, yeah. I looked it up briefly. I can't remember all the details. Yeah, but. the, the uh, I forget the scientist dude's name, but he only went by like, what was like Topolo or something? Um, but yeah, he was definitely a guy, the theater, the, uh, the Hawk guy was like a huge fan of Star Wars and big actor and then ended up being in one of the like newer Star Wars. Um, right. Yeah. Back in the day. And I think someone else was also in a Star Wars uh, too. So, wow. That's so crazy. All that unintentional crossover considering George Lucas was supposed to direct. Yeah. So it's like Flash this. Ford, and then the actors go on to be in the ones that he didn't direct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like this movie was so close. This terrible movie is so close to one of like the best movies. You know, it's like they're just so Most much... successful. Well, okay. Uh... <laughs> All right. Cut the feed again, man. Jesus Christ. We've had to do this like three I already times cut it. with you. <laughs> oh, he likes Star Wars? Click. <laughs> <laughs> just erase the whole episode. I forgot um, Elliot watches sports and Star Wars. This is the end. I didn't the, mean At to. the same time, too. It's pretty. <laughs> It's a little tough, but uh, but yeah. So I mean, it is it is so weird that it's like this movie that I literally never heard of. They talk about it in Ted, in that movie Ted, that like that was uh -huh. his like yeah, yeah. thing. But it's like a it's a big thing, and it's a, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I think too. They oh, do right. a bunch of but like, it's flash a, so it's like this is a joke movie. Like you said, it's a cult classic yeah. because it is so bad. But it has ties to like it could have been very good. <laughs> Super close ties. I mean, oh, the other thing, yeah, Queen does the soundtrack, yep. which is, I think, like, honestly, like, kind of carries the movie almost. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. like, they also did the score, I think. Mm -hmm. So, like, a lot of the sound effects and a lot of just, like, the ambient music, too, was also Queen. Yeah, you could hear, but... you could hear Freddie, Mer Freddie Mercury when they would shoot. He'd go, pow! <laughs> <laughs> pew, pew! <laughs> um... <laughs> But they only Freddie Mercury only sings that one song, and even that one song only has like 19 words, yeah, yeah. and 17 of them are Flash, <laughs> right? And they're all Flash. Yeah, what I, I I'm not gonna lie, when I did hear that in the opening credits, I was like, okay, damn, this is a good like this is an actual song, and I was like, I feel like I've heard this before. And then when I saw it was Queen, I was like, oh, I've definitely just heard it around, but I had no idea. So that's where I was like, oh man, there's some fucking hitters in here, and then. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> it was honestly like all they focused on was like visual. They focused on everything but the script, it seems like. Be For sure. I mean, like, again, like I watched it when I was a kid and there was images as I was watching it where I was like, that is the image that I think like these weird memories I have of childhood. And I'm yeah. like, oh, those weren't my memories. <laughs> that was Flash Gordon, the movie. <laughs> Like, I always imagine that mean guy. When I think of, like, an evil guy yeah. and I'm reading a, a book or something, I, it's like, that's just the image, I imagine. Yeah. And I always kind of, until a couple of days ago when I watched this, was like, where did that come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You're reading about, like, Bernie Madoff and you're just picturing me. I'm like, all right, a guy with a, 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 a helmet that is <laughs> creased onto his head that looks like like melted paint. Yeah. That weird black helmet that he has. He has a, a, you know, like a Fu Manchu beard. And this is the guy that's doing pyramid schemes. Right. And then I, this is the guy who wants to sell me essential oils. <laughs> well, shit. Let's uh, prequel, sequel, reboot. Since, I mean, you got right. other things going on, apparently. You have fucking family. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what do you think? Can we let that sadness uh, hang in the air for a little longer? 
you know, it's kind of like movies are my family. So that's, <laughs> that's kind of why I started this. Um, Papa Flash, Mama Ming. What the <laughs> fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> what do you what do you want to see? Um, prequel to Flash Gordon, dude. I would love to see the expanded universe and know how Ming came to power. Oh yeah, oh that would be really good. Yeah, that'd be rad. Do you do? You, are you glad you saw it? Yes. Yeah, yes. that's the thing about bad movies like this is that you're still like. I got a lot out of this. Yeah. Like more so than I, I get more out of it almost than I would like a medium quality movie. Yeah. And what pissed me off about it the most is that like visually it's great. And the cinematography is very good. Like there was a, there was a shot where they're like panning down the, um, like the glasses guys, you know, who like look at yeah. shit. Right. So I was very curious right. about that them. That also sticks my memory all the time that when they take the glass off and there's just the wires, and the wires and shit. Yeah. So it's like, I want to know about them, but there's a shot where they're panning down, like, their death. I've got her. Where? Section 409, Peter. This looks fucking great. Like, this, yeah. visually, this <laughs> is awesome. And then you pay attention for three minutes, and you're like, oh, boy. Right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I was like, okay, so he's going to jump out. What does he do? He like jumps out of a spaceship into a swamp. Then he goes into some sinky sand yeah. into the mouth of a giant land thing. Octopus yeah. cockroach gets lasered out of that hops onto a rocket cycle. Yeah, they called it. Is that what they called it? I was fucking something. There's no wheel. Why is it a cycle? <laughs> so they get they get in, they get onto his rocket cycle, and then he goes to save the day. That all happens in about two and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I want to see a reboot where they actually think about the viewer in this, because I feel like they got so wrapped up in like, it's this huge world and there's so much and we can show so much. So like that, that thing on the ground that starts to eat them, that gets shot or whatever that they're like, yeah. And then he falls onto the, you know, the fucking ground thing. And then there's the, when they do the tree thing where they stick their hands in the thing bites them or whatever. They're like, yeah, we can show, we can show the ground, you know, the tree thing. And uh, they're all thing. They're like, yeah, you got the the air thing. And uh, Greg will come up with the names <laughs> later. <laughs> Greg's great with fucking names. But uh, so good. But so they get like wrapped up in it and they're like doing that, that they forget the viewer has no idea about like any of this, <laughs> right. which is like you obviously right. don't have to explain every single thing in the movie. But it's like there has to be some pretext, you know, and they give yeah. some a little bit with like side characters like the uh the like henchman guy the gold-faced guy which i was like that dude looks fucking dope uh but then but he like with the with predatora uh trademark but uh she was like yeah he's jealous of me so his spies like make shit up for me to get in trouble and then ming after he like banishes her is like then after that you know we might marry her to you and he's like fucking stoked about it so i'm like oh okay yeah that's like some backstory but then it's like right. for that one backstory they ignored five other ones that would have <laughs> including the main character exactly. including the titular fucking character exactly. of which we know nothing about outside of his fucking how much he can bench press yeah exactly we know he's a, a quarterback which for the jets just a, guess. <laughs> a quarterback right, for right. the jets in, all you know. in a which i wanted to look it up like were they even a good team in like 79 <laughs> right. i i doubt it highly unlikely yeah so i want to see a reboot like a jj abrams like dune type thing you know where it's just it's all fucking decked out i don't even think jj abrams is doing dune but you know like a modern like like blade runner you know where they actually they keep you know they make it look good because it still look good but they you know who should do it it should, you know who should do it is mike judge if Mike Judge did like a remake of of uh, Flash Gordon, um, but in more of like the idiocracy style, like like of tone, oh my you know, God. because that's that's the whole thing is there's no there's no like vision beyond the visual element of the story, right? There's no like yeah. 
Because, like you said, <laughs> like, all right, so he jumps onto the whatever Greg calls it, the octopus cockroach thing in the ground. Yeah. And, uh, and then they'll be like, yeah, so how did he get there? And they're like, shut up, Alex. Get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> but would it be, okay, so then would it be idiocracy? Like, um, like he's just a normal person, just like, guys, I'm not. But they're like, you're so fucking good. Like, you're so talented. That's exactly. And so he's exactly. OK, so that would explain it more where he's just stumbling through it. And maybe he's pointing at the doctor. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a second, you know, second string quarterback for the Jets. <laughs> he's like, like, I didn't even like the main guy. I didn't even start. OK, I haven't. Look, I wanted to be a kicker, but they wouldn't. My, my publicist gave me these shirts like, I don't I don't care, you know. My name's Dave. It's not even Flash. No one has ever called me Flash. Okay, so I I like that. And the whole time he's pointing at the scientists, like this is the this dude's smart. This is the dude you need. <laughs> and also, he was a Nazi. You guys like Nazis. Yeah, that right, was his yeah. thing. <laughs> right up your alley. Also, way better actor than me. <laughs> like like my, like a head and shoulders above me. He's talent. classically <laughs> trained. He is classically <laughs> trained. And he doesn't have a family. His wife died. We all saw that. So he he will stay here. I just want to go back. I want to play some games. I have a casserole in the oven, so I got to go. He will stay. And then they're like, do you want to ride this rocket cycle? And he's like, oh, all right, I'm, I'll, I'll stay. <laughs> all right, maybe just like a couple times, but then I really got to go. Is that a pillow fight going on? I'll, I'll hang out for a little bit. <laughs> He rides the, he, and then he rides the he rides the cycle once. Is like, okay, that was pretty cool. Then he sees the pillow fight, and then he's like, I'm reborn. And then you see a spark in his eyes, and then the uh, flash. Oh. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that starts, and then the uh, and then the main like eagle dude is just like, Gordon's alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just an ending yeah, montage an ending montage of him just like living his best life <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the song gets more relaxing it's like flash ah yep and it's and then it ends <laughs> it ends with him laying in like a space hammock just like going back and forth just looking out like and then it ends it goes flash and then he goes ah uh-huh. And, then that's, <laughs> and then that's it. Why does that girl has the only one with an accent? Does she have an Italian accent? Who? Um, like Ming is from like... Predatora? Jolly old London town, I think. And then <laughs> yeah. his daughter is... She's Italian. Italian. I think she's, that's she's Italian accent. And then Flash Gordon sounds like... even The Jets... Is that New Jersey? It's New York. The New York Jets in the ni- in 1980s. So yeah. then... And then he sounds like he's a, from fuck. He's a Ninja Turtle. Well, dude, he has like a California accent. You can get drafted. Well, also when it was filming, when it was working. filming, he was. This is my beef with the whole movie. I just didn't like how the accents were consistent. That's my love. <laughs> That's your only critique of Greg. It's like Greg's not that good at accents. I just he's great at accents. I just don't. I didn't understand his choices. <laughs> Other than that, great guy. I love him to death. He made the movie. No one wants to take away his Academy Award. <laughs> Except why why one British, one Italian? I just I don't get it. <laughs> because they're a worldly family. All right, fine. Anyway, um I'll buy the remake for two hundred million. I I'm the president of Netflix. Deal. <laughs> Deal. And then when you I'll buy the prequel, the remake, <laughs> and the reboot. And then when you show up with uh remake I'll buy the remake, the reboot. I'll do. I'll get both the do overs and um, go ahead and throw in the treequels. And, and let me the treequels. <laughs> That's about the tree people. I'm Netflix. <laughs> um, so there's three Flash Gordon treequels. Yeah, we're gonna. They are the movies that follow the Flash Gordon movie, but they're about the tree people. Yeah, we're gonna do some some prequels about the tree people. Okay, but we're gonna call them, and this is non-negotiable. Treequels, take it or leave it. Take it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who do we write the check to? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of treequels, don't you have uh, your own sort of uh, thing dropping soon? 
I do. I am starring as Flash Gordon and J.J. Abrams and Mike Judge's Trequels. Um, Lying bitch. <laughs> no, I have my album coming out. Oh. Uh, it's called it. Yeah. My, my debut stand up comedy album, recorded in the before times. Is that like a, <laughs> is that a club? What is that? Um, yeah, it's before times on fourth. And <laughs> no, it, it was recorded in a, I should actually not brag about it being recorded before um, audiences were not allowed to fill a room because, um, I didn't sell it out or anything. Well, you didn't have to but, tell us that. I mean, at this point, we've all been away from crowds for so long. We have no idea what a, a full room sounds like. So, Isn't it crazy? Even when you're watching Flash Gordon and they're wrestling, you're like, man, no masks and any and none of these people. <laughs> <laughs> That's my whole, the whole, I like was slowly pulling my hair out throughout the whole movie because I'm like, no one's wearing a mask. No one's wearing, well, people were wearing a mask. They had like those dodo looking people. Right, right, but those are their those are their organic mouths. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, so I have my album coming out. I'm very fucking hyped. It's called Addictive Tickle. I recorded it last year, and uh, I'm very proud of it. It's awesome. Uh, hopefully, by the time this comes out, you can go check it out on iTunes and Spotify and stuff. And then I have my own podcast Ooh. called the Taylor Clark Comedy Show. Which hopefully will be live as well by the time this airs. Okay. All right. So you yeah. just got a and lot of just, you're cooking. A lot of, yeah. Yeah. A lot of irons in the fire. A lot of cooks in the fire. I'm I'm killing. I'm 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 cooking cooks. A lot of <laughs> a lot of iron chefs in the fire. Have you had um, a medium broiled iron chef? <laughs> All right. Well, with Tabasco. If, if you loved that riff, where where can people find you? What a terrible way to sell my album. Let me jang, Let me mangle up a bunch of sentences. Show you my skills. And now you can pay for this for an hour. <laughs> where can where can people uh, find you? Where can they get the, the um, info? I'm I'm Taylor Clark Comedy on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and my website TaylorClarkComedy.com. Oh, it's a, I thought, <laughs> the old fake out, huh? <laughs> you thought I had another thing to I say. Thought you had, I thought you had more. Uh, awesome. Well, check that out. Uh, as always, you can find me at Grant Radish, G-R-E-N-T-R-A-D-D-I-S-H, on all platforms. And check out the the YouTube channel if you uh, are listening. You know, you can watch along. You can see my face. You can see Taylor's beautiful face. You can see Taylor's kid's room. If that's really what you want to see, please don't ever listen to the podcast again because that's weird. Um, but tell your friends. Uh, also, check out, uh, you know, we're everywhere. Subscribe, rate, review, smash that like button, do all that. Uh, also, check out the Patreon. We have a Patreon for a couple bucks a month, less than a cup of coffee, you can show your support for the podcast. For a couple dollars more than that, you can suggest a movie for us to cover. You can. This is democracy at work, okay? And this isn't like mail-in voting or anything like that. This is all electronic, okay? And I haven't figured out the system yet, but uh, it will work, and uh, it'll be great. And uh, so you can do that. Show your support. It'd be greatly appreciated. Check it out. It's just uh, patreon.com slash the older kids pod or find us on all social media platforms at the older kids pod. And the link is in the bio. So that is it. Uh, it's been a good time. Thanks for coming on, man. And uh, <coughs> the old thumbs up. I, I, can I, you can still hear me. For whatever reason, I thought you cut my mic. Yeah, no, no. We're, dude, I was just joking about that, man. Like, I'm not that kind of guy for real. No one could hear you this entire time. Um, Actually, my no, light has gotten dimmer throughout. I'm just realizing th my, <laughs> I've probably gotten progressively worse lighting throughout this. Yeah, that's podcast. why. That's why I'm ending it because you don't you don't have your shit together. But uh, no, I'm joking. It's good. It's good. Hey, hey, you're fu why are you angry? Die! <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. You're the Bye. best, man. This was so fun.